We have a door. That is adorable. I chopped a chunk of my table. <laughs> Whipped cream for the mud pie. How would you measure that? I'm just a girl. A little bit of sanding so nobody gets stabbed. It's homemade, okay? Good enough. I'm throwing my daughter an enchanted fairy garden party for her eighth birthday, and we're about to DIY a lot of stuff for it. I'm a supporting character in a cartoon show. That's what I always wanted to be. So the first thing we're gonna make is a giant mushroom house wooden backdrop photo op prop. I want it to be a tall wooden mushroom house with a working door that you can peep out of to take photos with at the party and probably some other little smaller wooden props to go with it. I don't like how it looks. <laughs> All mushrooms are gonna be phallic. And you I don't have like to be that. mature about it. Oh, I, that is impossible. Because <laughs> we're about to have a lot of mushrooms around this party. Time to cut some wood. Gonna start with cutting the door out first, and I have to be careful with how I cut it because it's gonna be the opening, and we're gonna use the piece for the actual door as well, so I just wanna cut it carefully, smoothly. Safety first. Second. We have a door. That is adorable. <laughs> All right, now to cut the main outline. I chopped a chunk of my table. <laughs> I've mixed some Bondo here. It's like a compound that like you mix and you can use it to like fill holes, kind of like dry decks, but it's a little bit tougher and it dries super fast, but it smells horrible. Yeah, it's smelling very toxic up in here right now. So I just mixed some, now I'm feeling these knots came out. It'll dry pretty quick and then and then we can sand it. When we paint over it, it, it won't be noticeable. So out of our first sheet of plywood, we've got the main mushroom house shape with the door cut out. Still working on smoothing and sanding. In the meantime, second sheet of plywood. I know I wanna do some small mushrooms. I think some small mushrooms, maybe like a butterfly. And now that we've got our very not inappropriate shapes cut out that are just mushrooms and nothing else, we gotta paint them. For our three mushrooms, I'm thinking, to go with our color scheme, a rusty red, a pink of some sort, and a purple of some sort. Okay. Cause those are like kind of the main colors. And then the stem part will be like a beige-ish, whitish color. And I do wanna kind of make them look 3D where you can like see the underneath and then dots on top and then some dimension at the bottom. I'm gonna follow your lead because you have a stronger visual arts mind than I do. I do have a bachelor's degree in visual arts. You do, I spent all my time time in college writing like a nerd. <laughs> we all have our strengths and weaknesses, okay? For my rusty red, I think red, brown. Mm, let's see what this looks like. Making it a nice ketchup tone. Yeah, a little bit more brown. I wanna make more of like a muted, so it's not so cartoony. A little bit of green. Green? Color theory. Princess pink. Do you oh, think yeah. that's wrong for our color scheme? I wish it was more pastel. Add a little bit of white, just a little, not a lot. And then maybe a little yellow.
So we've got our little mushrooms painted and I'm actually really happy with how these turned out. I think they're cute. I like the color scheme. And so these are gonna need something on the back to stand them up so I can just place them around the yard, around the party, wherever I wanna put them. But before we even figure that out and also before we move on to painting the big mushroom, I really wanna figure out how we're gonna stand up the big mushroom because that's gonna be the difficult one. We have kind of an idea, but I wanna make sure it's super secure and structurally sound. So we're gonna switch gears to figuring out the supports and then we'll go back and paint the big mushroom. So I've got our laser level out, my favorite tool in your repertoire. We love the Bosch professional laser level. Bosch sponsor us. <laughs> I went ahead and put one mark here where we talked about having a stand yesterday because we are just gonna make a triangle. Mm -hmm. On this side, I think it'll be a little more difficult because we want it to support as like far up vertically as possible to really make sure like it doesn't like fall over. I have a feeling no matter where we put it, these stands are gonna be visible from the front. Unless we had a stand directly in the middle and we closed the door. I could kind of see it working with one main support, but then we really gotta figure out the whole bottom part because you need something to put the sandbags on to I, really yeah. hold it securely. I think we take one of our other two by fours or maybe a, a flatter piece of wood and connect this to like a horizontal like legs going out both ways and then we put sandbags and I think that'll hold it. We're gonna want 45 degree cuts on both ends. There's this like lock unlock lever here. Mm -hmm. You can unlock it and twist this base um, to kind of get those angled cuts. Oh, I see. So then when you put it flat, then the blade is angled. That should be easy. Let's do that real quick. Okay, I'm scared. I am too. Safety first. <laughs> My comments always yell at us for not because we're not safe. Following like proper safety, safety, safety measures. Like y'all need to be wearing this and doing that. They're not wrong. I'm trying. I'm trying to be better about that. <laughs> it just barely didn't reach. Ooh. You committed. I would just do it. It, it doesn't need to be pretty. It's fine, it'll this still is work. Pretty, this is otherwise a clean cut. Okay, let's see. Let's see how it sits. We might need to sand like this part a little bit, but that's a really good cut. Thank you for calling this a really good cut. Because it it's not, but I appreciate I've your support. I've successfully done an angled cut. <laughs> All right, over here. So Angle's we, so we don't right. want a 45 degree, we want... We want more than 45, because 45 pushes it out. It would be like that is where it would sit. And theoretically, we could do that. But I don't know if that's high enough to be stable enough. I yeah. feel like it, I would feel better if it was more up here. So let's increase the angle maybe. How would you measure that? I'm just a girl. I'm just a girl. <laughs> Does the blade even go any other way? Yeah. What if we just do it janky, like freehand? Yeah. Women in STEM. Okay, now let's test it. See? Yeah. You just gotta try stuff sometimes. Oh, you know. Right? Like that should be that the should cut. Be, yeah. Oh, well, look <laughs> at us figuring things out. Who needs a table saw? We do. We don't. Yes, we do. I'm scared of table saws. Ryobi, gift us a if table If we get saw. gifted one, so be it. But I'm too scared to buy one. So if we're doing something along those lines, that needs to be done first before that, because that changes the point of this. Correct. We have a standing mushroom. It might be a little janky on the back, but it's standing and we field tested it. It is a little wobbly, but it's not gonna fall. Obviously need to paint it. Don't even ask how or what the method is. We were just making stuff up as we went along, just figuring it out. I still have to attach the door because it's gonna be a real working door on hinges. But first I'm gonna go ahead and paint everything, including the door. That way I don't have to worry about like painting around the door hardware. While I get started on painting, Zoe is going to actually actually make a few more cuts on our butterfly pieces. We had already started cutting them out, but I decided that I wanted to add some more cutout details to these just to make them a little bit more intricate. And it'll actually, I think, save us some time because then I'm just gonna paint these one solid color, but it'll still have like the detail with the cutouts instead of trying to paint them with more detail. Thank you. 
So I thought I was gonna paint this differently than how I painted this, but now I don't like it now that I started doing it. So I am gonna basically make it look exactly like this on a larger scale. So I need to add in this little part to make it look more 3D. I just need to like wait for this to dry and then fix it. But in the meantime, I'm just gonna go in with the cream part on the bottom. While I wait for Zoe the big mushroom to finish <laughs> drying <laughs> so we can attach the door, I wanna see about making the little mushroom stand up. I think we could utilize some of these little scraps that we have and just literally do like this and then that should hold it because these don't need much to stand up. So I'm just gonna like nail these in. Screwing on the hinges to create a functioning door. Doing it manually because our battery died for all of our power tools. Wow, all of our wooden cutouts are done. We've got the big mushroom house, our little mushroom guys, and the two butterflies. And I'm pretty proud. I think they look really good. Next project is fabric covered mushrooms. That sounds like an, an entree. <laughs> I got these styrofoam pieces. Makes the perfect mushroom shape, the half circles and the cones. So that's gonna be our main base. I also got smaller cones to do a different height. So I have four sets. This is something that I've seen other people do on Pinterest and whatnot, but I'm kind of putting my own little spin on it. I'm thinking for the main like head part of the mushroom, if I use this purple fabric, which could be just cute by itself to cover it, but I thought it might be cute to also layer on. I got this from the clearance, like pre-cut fabric that people didn't want anymore section at Walmart for cheap, but this pink organza has this embellishment on it that I think would just add the perfect little fantasy enchanted texture <laughs> to the mushroom. And then for the cone, I'm gonna try and do something cool with this yarn to create a texture, but we'll see. Now, what I learned from seeing other people do it is that they use pins to pin it down into the styrofoam to hold it better. I'm feeling like that's because trying to glue it doesn't work very well on its own. So let's see. So I've got my fabric pinned on. As far as connecting this, I could definitely just put a whole bunch of hot glue and just try to glue it. I just feel like that wouldn't be super sturdy and I want these to be a little more sturdy than that. So I think I'm gonna use these balloon sticks or just like a dowel or whatever to stab down in there and stab into here to create like an inner structure. But I need to kind of trim this fabric back first of all. So we've got this part done. I feel like it's pretty secure. I am gonna still add the pink overlay, but first I wanna go ahead and cover my base. I think it would look cute if I wrap yarn all the way up. <laughs> Wait, 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 wait,
Ta-da! I think it's cute. It adds an, another little texture. I do have a big old gap right here. <laughs> Just don't look at that part. Now for the overlay, take this and cut a piece that can fit around and also have a little extra to have a little ruffle underneath like some mushrooms have. So I need like a big circle. Using my handy dandy stainless steel ice bucket to help me cut a circle. To make a pink mushroom, I had this satin fabric, but it's a little too Barbie pink. This is from the Malibu Barbie party. So just to use what I have, I also had this other sheer fabric. And I think if I layer them together, it makes a nice shade of pink with the sheer on top of the darker pink. And then I am still also gonna layer the textured one on top of that. I could also just get the color pink fabric that I want, but reduce, reuse, recycle. For the next project, I'd like to make a decorative branch. <laughs> So my thought process is to create a cement base for it so it can stand up by itself. And then I can like decorate it, put some moss on it, just make it like a nice little decorative table topper situation to style probably with like the food table set up, something like that. Bring some whimsical forest vibes to my tabletop decor. So all I'm gonna do is use this quick Crete mix and I'm using a little plate. I'm gonna let this completely set up and see if it's stable enough to move on to the next step. It worked. It's still drying a little bit, but it's just dry enough and I think it's nice and sturdy, so that's good. I am now going to take one of my favorite materials, expanding foam, to create even more of like a mound shape. And it's also sticky, so I can stick some moss to it. Whipped cream for the mud pie. Here's my little mossy mound. I think that looks cute. I'm gonna let that dry. Any white still showing, I could just hit it with some green spray paint to help fill that in. But I'm gonna let this dry for now. And then now for the actual branch part, I'm thinking I could glue some moss on the branches and then I'm gonna cricket some paper butterflies to perch on top. For the next project, I wanna make some yard signs. I have four of these like wooden stakes that were left over from something I was doing in my garden at some point. So I'm gonna recycle these. And then I also have a bunch of scrap plywood pieces from all of our various recent projects that would be perfect to cut into the actual pieces of wood for the signage. I just feel like this is a really good way to use up some stuff I already have, use tools I already have. And so I wanna make four different chunks of signage. One's gonna say fairies only this way to kind of like lead people around the house to the party and then keep going. One that says Zaya's Enchanted Garden and then another one that's kind of labeling some of the activity stations that we have and like pointing to them or whatever. For my first sign, I need one plank that's just a rectangle, no arrow shape. The one underneath it points to the right with the arrow shape. I have newspaper that I can use as like a general size template. Ta-da! 
a little bit of sanding so nobody gets stabbed. Now to attach my pieces to my steak, I'm just gonna use my handy dandy Ryobi Airstrike nail gun. We love Ryobi. Because the plywood has like this orangey, ugly color to it, I do wanna give it more natural looking brown wood stain. I don't have any wood stain of that color, but I do have brown acrylic paint, and this is a scrappy leftover use what you got project. So I'm thinking if I just mix some brown paint into water and make like a, a paint wash, just make like some really watery paint. light wash over the whole thing. Give it a little bit of a cuter color. This is still more orange than I wanted, but it's fine. Using color theory to customize my color, I'm gonna add blue to make it less orange and black to make it a little darker. When I'm trying to space out writing like this, I like to count how many letters there are to find the middle point. So this is 12. So the sixth letter right here is kind of like the midpoint, more or less. I mean, different letters take up different space, but roundabout. So then if you start with that, if I put the E towards the middle, I should be able to space out my stuff right. I still ran out of space because I ended up making my letters thicker with the brush that I was using. So I had to squeeze it in on this side. I could cut it right here to make it look more intentional. It's homemade, okay, good enough. Ta-da, first one done. And it just stabs into the ground. And then I'll have three more for all of our other signage. For our last project, I'm gonna be reusing my handy dandy handmade backdrop shelf thingy, which I originally built and made for my Christmas party. It was green, then we repainted it pink and used it for my Galentine's party for the kissing booth. And now we're gonna use it again for this fairy garden party. And luckily this pink color is within our color scheme for the fairy garden party, so we don't need to repaint it or anything, but I do just need to peel off the vinyl sticker here and then I'll make a new one. We're gonna be using this for the wing Things and Things station at the party, which is where all the party guests can come and get their accessories to dress up like a fairy. So we'll have like little headbands and little accessories. And then I also want to hand out wings. So for the wings, I came up with an idea to add a rod under here to be able to like hang the wings from. I got these curtain rod holders from Amazon. These are specifically ceiling mount curtain rod holders. And then we already had this leftover piece of PVC pipe from our paper flowers project. My idea is to mount it like this underneath the shelf on both sides. So we'll have a little clothing rod hanging down to hang the wings from. And then for the sign, I'll probably just make it say, wings and things, become a fairy. I don't know, I have to think about what exactly I wanna make it say, but I'll make it cute. So I just need to screw this on and then I'm gonna spray paint all of this pink to match it so it blends and make a new sticker. Using my handy dandy Bosch laser level. <laughs> we really do love this thing. It's not just product plate, not sponsored. Before when I was doing this, I was trying to eyeball it because I didn't have this, but I'm trying to get it relatively centered. I've got it on my transfer tape. Like that. I think that's pretty good. Good enough, right? This is brand new transfer tape that I forgot to prime. So this might be an issue actually, that's annoying. Damn it, I always forget to de-stickify my transfer tape a little bit because it's super sticky, fresh off the roll. Almost didn't get it, but I got it. It's on there, barely. Now to attach these things. How cute. 
All right, so here is where we're at with all of the Enchanted Fairy Garden party props. I'm actually pretty impressed with how much stuff we made in the scale of some of these things. So just to kind of walk you through everything and the idea behind everything, we've obviously got our big mushroom house with the working door, the smaller mushrooms that go with it, and the butterflies. This is gonna end up being like the main photo op spot of the party. We're gonna be pairing up some balloons with it, our giant paper flowers that we also made. So it's gonna be this huge scene where you can kind of pose with it and take pictures. So I'm excited about that. I think these turned out really well. And then we've got our branches. Went ahead and made two of them. I still need to add butterflies to this one, but these are gonna be used for tabletop decor to kind of style probably where we have the food set up and stuff like that. I think these also turned out really cute just to bring in some of that actual natural real wood effect and make it look foresty. And then we actually ended up making a giant one as well because Zoe found this really nice big branch and I was like hey we have extra stuff let's just go ahead and make a big one so we'll place this around somewhere I'll probably add butterflies to this one as well we have our signs which we're gonna have a bunch of these placed around to direct everybody and label everything I think that turned out super cute they're pointing at the bottom so they'll just stab in the ground and then we got our wings and things station I'm super happy with how the little clothing rod situation turned out I tested it out this is not exactly how I'm gonna style the wings but something along these lines Lines, to have a bunch of wings laid out for everyone to choose one and wear it during the party. And then I'll have other accessories and stuff to choose from up on the shelves. And I'll probably pair a mirror with it somewhere nearby so you can kind of like, you know, get dressed and check out how you look. And then we have our little fabric mushrooms. I ended up making four of these, two shorter, two taller ones. I think these turned out super cute. I'll most likely use these on the main table where the kids are gonna eat at as like part of the centerpiece. And yeah, so we made some really good progress. Definitely there's still a few more things to make, a few more details to add. Y'all know I'm gonna keep judging and adding stuff till the last possible minute, but we're getting close, so stay tuned.